While you were out there practicing the eight strike pattern, Sensei Calvin and Sensei Chris had a good suggestion that uh, they would like to demonstrate to you one of the best ways to practice this with your partner. And essentially what it boils down to is, is uh, one of them will be an attacker attacking with either hand and then the other will have to respond with one of the eight strikes to a vital target. So gentlemen, if you'll face each other and bow, and just go ahead and take over from here at your own speed. This is excellent because it gives you a real perspective into how these eight strikes work in tactical applications. Essentially, the attack is pretty static. They're coming straight in and they're responding to the attack in a straight in response. Uh, but you can up the intensity if you've got good control. You see, since the Chris has excellent control. Okay, right now we're going to go uh, from the uh, linear uh, straight in attacks to more of a free flow situation. Gentlemen, if you'll take your positions and uh, just share with our friends out there in the audience uh, what you can do in a more free flowing situation, give us some ideas for the personal practice. And essentially, this is the next step. Once you feel confident in the strikes and you feel that you're able to move you know, with some degree of safety with your partner, we can to vary the uh, challenges that you have to identify and respond to you in the short step. And that's exactly what Chris is doing right now. He's looking for openings as an uh, attacker comes in and he's going to use the stick to come take those openings and to work through them effectively. Now this is still at a basic level. We're going to work a little bit more of an advanced level in just a few moments. Welcome back to our class. Hopefully you've had enough time for your wounds and injuries to heal. Just joking. I want to take just a moment and reinforce for you that it's very easy to injure one another if you're not careful when you practice this with a partner. Now, I know you all want to learn this as fast as you can. I mean, I'm the same way. But the objective in the martial arts is for you and your partner to both learn it as fast as each of you can, together, like a team, without hurting each other. Martial arts means self-improvement, and part of that self-improvement means that you go home in good health. So be careful, and cautious, and don't do anything that puts your partner or you at risk until you're at the point in time when you have absolute control of the technique. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now another thing is, with respect to the eight strike pattern that you were just working on, if you're by yourself, you can practice it like a kata. In fact, you can treat it like a kata. For example, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Just practice it like that till you master it. And then when you master it on the right side, take everything that you learned on the right side, teach yourself how to do it on the left side so that you're completely ambidextrous. When you're at that point, you move on to the eight block pattern, which is what we're gonna talk about right now. So Sensei Chris, if you'll give me a hand here, We'll just do this slow for our friends, and uh, we want to ask that you do eight attacks, and uh, just take a look at how this starts out. Don't worry about learning it yet, we're just going to show it to you, and we'll go back and cover it in a bit more detail. Number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, and number eight. Okay, eight block pattern. Now, I'm gonna give you a frontal view of the angles of these blocks so you can replicate them on your own exactly as they're to be, to be performed. Number one, notice the angle. Number two, and we'll explain these angles in just a minute. Number three, number four, number five, number six, 
number 7. Number 8 should be easy because it's the same as the previous number 8. The actual block is the sunrise block that precedes the counter, and you end with a counter. Okay? Keep that in mind. We'll take a look at the angles and how they work to your advantage. We're going to have the camera shoot just slightly over Sensei Chris's shoulder as he comes in with the first attack to my head. See how I ride it up? I don't try to meet him power for power because a power response will not be absolutely effective against an incoming strong attack. See, he can overwhelm me. But watch what I do. I begin to redirect his energy as he comes in. I let him ride or I go over the top. See the control that you have against the attacker. It's a whole sense of energy that you're trying to develop within yourself. Sometimes he'll come in over the top and I'll feel his power and I'll convert it to a different move. So you have to develop that ability to read where his power is at. Now we'll just let you see what I did a second time. So you can try it on your own with your partner. He comes in, I catch his power, I ride over the top and clear. Notice how I clear with the butt end of the stick. Now that explains a little bit of the reasoning for the angles of these sticks. So he comes in with a second attack straight in. I'm doing number two now. See the angle? See how I'm catching him in that angle? See, that's a control. And what type of control you can? Lots of controls. So I can move around like this and back again. I can take him down to the ground. Okay, all of that's possible because of the angle. If the stick is too vertical as he punches, his power will overwhelm the stick and move me. So the angle is like a wedge. When he comes in, see the wedge snares it and catches it. It's, it's an, quite an authoritative catch. And you can respond to that if you have to. So this is block number one. Number two is a wedge at the head level. Number three, give me a left hand attack, sir. Number three, the wedge, right? Now watch. See how quick it can be. Wedge, hit. Or wedge, hit. So all these begin to combine. Number four is a mid-level attack. Same thing, wedge as in number two. For the same reason, you have the same type of controls. But in number two, we went one way, we'll go a different way here. You can go under, over, and around. Up, sir. Number five on this side, mid level. Same thing, got straight into the head. Or well, you can do it a reverse number two strike if that's your choice. You can do a number four strike, you can do a number five strike. You see how this begins to tie together? It's quite effective. Number six, against a kick or a low attack. Six, see the hit? It's almost like you're working a machete. He comes in, you don't need the other hand, you can just hit with it. He grabs my belt, see the grab, hit, hit. Okay, number seven, this is a closing hand. This is an opening hand. This is the crane closes, the crane opens. The crane is closed, the crane's about to open. Okay, say it throws a punch. Number eight, end of fight. Okay. Thanks, sir. Eight strike pattern, eight block pattern. Do the eight block pattern just like a kata, like we spoke about with the eight strike pattern. First move, one. Check move, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay? Then combine them when you practice by yourself or with your partner. Block number one, swing the arm around, hit. Block number two, hit, hit. Work the various combinations. Number three, in, hit. Number four, in, down, low, high. Five, hit, down. Five, six, hit, 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 seven, hit, hook, strike. All those are possibilities. Eight, finish. Take those, take a few days with your partner, work on, work on them together, work them on you by yourself. When you feel confident to move forward, give us a call and come on back.